Hello, welcome to a new video. Anchor released a whole new group of high-end chargers. The Anchor 200 and 250 watt chargers are the big ones. A 200 watt is a more typical adapter, but with lots of watts and lots of ports. Like many others, the real question is, what will the efficiency be like and will the various ports work together? The 250 watt charger is another feature rich adapter. It has a display, a knob and a button, an app control and more settings than I can count. I go through all the settings on this thing to see what it can do. The power performance, of course, is what I really want to check out though, since ultimately this is still a charger. There's affiliate links which earn me a couple percent but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. First up is this 250 watt prime power adapter. This is a lot of watts and what turns out to be a pretty small power adapter. The packaging is the more modern, mostly paper design. The only single use plastic is the plug cover. The adapter does something. Very welcome, no captive plugs. You can actually finally swap out the plug for whatever you need. It has the normal figure eight style standard plug. The adapter does have something unique in a little knob and a rather satisfying click and turn and a push button. This also allows you to navigate the button and get to many of the adapter's features right on the device. Not as easily as with the app though, which I'll get there. The power negotiation on this adapter is adjustable. So you can turn ports on and off. You can set a priority port to never turn off. You can set it to a multi-laptop mode. You can change a lot of the USB negotiation tactics for this device. This is very unique and very interesting. It's something people have asked for and this offers the customization, but it also means it's gonna take time to get it set up and then certain ports will only do certain things. I left it on AI mode for most of the things. Insert joke about AI buzzwords here. My guess is they are playing with the control pins on off the shelf USB control ASICs. That's an integrated chip that can't be changed, but Anchor is big enough, so maybe custom chips are possible. Once plugged in, the idle power is high, but you can make it go lower. You have to long hold the power button to force a shutdown. Then it's acceptable. If you leave a cable plugged in or use the app functionality, it will stay in the higher power usage mode. So basically, if you do not use it at all, it meets requirements. If you do anything with it, like leave Bluetooth or Wi-Fi turned on or use it as a clock, it doesn't even come close. But officially, fully turned off is the lowest power mode and that meets requirements. LED light bulbs can have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and use 0.1 watts. Why can't this? That's also a topic for another day. In terms of output modes, this thing has a lot to offer. But as usual, with these newer offerings, no fixed 12 volt mode on the USB-C port. The USB-A port does, however, offer this with the quick charge mode. The PPS mode is great. Over five amps overload point at up to 16 volts out. No, it doesn't go to 20 volts on the PPS mode. But this is also another option for the 12 volt output. It does meet the requirements to get you to full speed charging on Samsung phones. The display on this adapter is very accurate in terms of the watts it shows. It appears very stable and does a great job of tracking what is actually happening on the outputs. This is probably the best I've seen from a built-in output power tracker. The app is probably the better way to see this though. I bought a tablet to check out the app functionality. I don't have enough equipment or expertise to test this properly, but it's a major selling point. You do have to sign up for an account, Pairing took multiple tries, but it did work. And the app shows the same data that is on the screen with more data available simultaneously. It lets you control all the things you can control in the device menu on Bluetooth, but it also adds timing and port control. The app itself is good in terms of functionality. It didn't lag or crash. The app does stay active and open in the background on your device. It also locks out a bunch of things as advanced. I clicked through everything in the entire app and it didn't unlock anything. I paid $170, signed up for an account, installed your app, give me all the features now. Time to switch to the dark side. Anchor really wants you to connect this device to your Wi-Fi and get it on the internet. This needs to be directly connected to the internet to work all the way. I'd like to see someone do data collection of what this thing is actually doing over Wi-Fi. It's out of my field of expertise. They also can't connect to networks with an extra security step. The marketing material does state that you gain features the more you connect it. Maybe the next firmware update, they can brick it or make you pay more for more features. They should charge you per month to access these features. Coming soon. You want 140 watts? That'll be $10 a month. As I run out of fingers to count all the monthly subscriptions I have. 
damn it, I am the mark. But overall, it is a pretty polished experience. When testing the device and trying to get a configuration that would give me 10 watts on the USB-A, 100 watts on the USB-C, and 140 watts on another USB-C, I found that was not possible. The USB-C port delivering 100 watts will only deliver about 85 watts because the USB-A block uses 22.5 watts of the power distribution. You can configure one port to do 140 watts with other things connected by setting this as a priority port. So this isn't as advanced as the marketing leads on. I expect a slider or something for each USB port. So 45 watts on this port, 62 watts on this port, but it doesn't work that way. You can make one port a 140 watt port or two ports 100 watt ports, but it isn't purely configurable, at least not as is. Is it possible? Yes but maybe that's something they can add in the future. I don't think it's possible with fixed USB ASICs to get that flexibility, but no idea what Anchor is using inside. When looking at the data for this power adapter, the efficiency is on the lower end. When the power adapter is being used at a lighter load, 25%, still 62 watts, let's just go with meh. It works its way up to okay on the highest end, but at that point, it still has to dissipate almost 30 watts in this tiny case of an adapter. So the thermals are coming, and it won't be a surprise now. The ripple voltage and DC voltage were good from this adapter. So work is being done to keep the output voltage clean for charging your devices. The AC side power quality is also treated well. Not efficiently, but the design makes some effort to keep the current and voltage in phase and clean, but sacrificing efficiency to get clean DC and AC power is also not the goal. Next up is this 200 watt power adapter. This 200 watt adapter's most appealing thing is the value, which I will be checking out later on. So this adapter is more simple. It doesn't have a display or any apps, but it is available in Europe. So I will be testing this on 230 volt and 50 hertz power as well. The power cord is again removable, which is very welcome. This thing is pretty small. It has the shiny new face panel design. The rest of the case looks good. The usual compliance marks are on the bottom. The adapter has six USB ports, four USB-C ports, and two USB-A ports. The power distribution is more simple. No 140 watt ports, so 100 watt maximum from a single USB-C port. The USB-A ports do offer some QC modes and the only way to access 12 volts. The power distribution was fast on this device. Once plugged in, the power usage of this adapter starts out on the higher end, but if you give it a few minutes, it settles down to a very low value. This was on both 230 volt and 120 volt operation. So this adapter is optimized for global use at less than 100 milliwatts of idle power usage. Kudos there. Once you plug in a cable like a watch charger and draw a light load, that does come up to about 0.5 watts, but that is also not bad for a device in this class. It's almost two watts with the 250 watt adapter. The performance for this power adapter is okay. It is a value option. The voltage ripple is low and stable, which is what you wanna see. The voltage on the 20 volt mold is low compared to others. This is something I've seen before, but it's still above 19 volts with a very short USB cable. On 230 volts, the efficiency improves and this is welcome. This adapter is a better option for a desktop charger in the 230 volt market versus others I've looked at. It isn't all roses though. All AC power adapters have to have separation or isolation between the mains and the DC side of the power adapter. This is measured as leakage current. The lower the leakage current, the better the adapter performs. In practical terms, this is the tingling feeling you get when using your laptop or phone with certain adapters. In terms of the isolation, the 250 watt adapter did excellent, and the 200 watt adapter did worse. A sensitive user may detect some of that leakage in some environments. It will be more detectable in a 230 volt market, but I think people are using it and not having issues. In comparison with the 200 watt, it is about three times more leaky versus the 250 watt. Being measurably worse doesn't mean it's bad. Being a desktop adapter, if some piece of your equipment or desk setup is earthed, it can mitigate a tingling issue because the current will flow the easiest path back to earth. It gets complicated. Okay, thermal time. The 250 watt adapter is a relatively small adapter for the power level. And with the efficiency, it's going to get hot. It has to dissipate a lot of watts in that tiny plastic box and the thermal interface to air may not be good enough. You will get about 
30 minutes out of this adapter at full load. Again, this is an abusive condition, but it's what it's rated for. A temperature readout or a warning that it's getting too hot would be nice. The power banks say why it shut down, and this adapter doesn't tell you why, it just stops working. The 200 watt didn't fare much better. On 230 volts, it might hold up, but at 120 volts, the efficiency is just not high enough, and it also tripped on thermals at 35 minutes. The threshold for this one, like the newer 100 watt prime adapter, seems to be set much lower. So this likely will help the adapter last longer, but at the cost of reduced power levels under heavy load. Well, let's compare these things. The Anchor 240 watt with its heatsink base is the obvious comparison choice, along with a few others for good measure. My daily driver is the Satoshi 165 watt, which has its own issues, of course, as they all do. So how do the 250 and 200 watt compare to these other big adapters? Let's find out. The old Anchor 240 watt is a pretty heavy adapter, so both of these new adapters do shave some weight off, including the cords. The new Anchor adapters are 666, the number of the beast, and 777, grace of the angels, grams for the 200 watt and 250 watt respectively, including the power cords, which they leave out when they describe them online. The density is pretty much the same on all of these. They're all moderately sized bricks. The Apple is still very light, but only one port and a lot less watts. In terms of the idle performance, the newer 200 watt anchor is an excellent performer. And even under light load, this doesn't go wild using too many watts. This number also stays nice and low on either 120 volt or 230 volt input voltages, which is a real positive. The Satoshi makes itself look bad here, but the reality is the 250 watt only uses that low power when you shut it down. If it's app connected or a cable is left plugged in, it uses much more power. The 250 watt is being given a generous result here. In terms of the average performance, these adapters average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE 6 efficiency, that means from 25 to 100% load efficiency, is a bit more spread out. The 250 watt adapter is the worst one I've seen in a while just on the edge of meeting requirements for a multi-voltage adapter, which has lower requirements. The 200 watt is better, but still doesn't measure up to the previous editions of adapters. This is why those others get hot, but don't overheat. On 230 volt, the 200 watt should hold up a bit better over time. The higher voltage means lower current, which means it should get less hot. Okay, let's talk about value. And here I finally have something that really stands out from the crowd. The price point on that 200 watt anchor adapter is amazing. You are getting two adapters for the price of one here. And for this better value, a little lower efficiency and a little bit of thermal indiscretion seems a little more tolerable. So it's cheap, so it performs a bit worse. And that makes me feel better. Would I rather it be $20 more expensive and hold up to the competitors? Yes. And in that case, would it replace the Satoshi if it met the efficiency numbers? Yes. A couple extra ports are always welcome too. Conclusion time. This video got delayed because it's so different than what everyone else is posting, so I cut some things. I tried to sugarcoat anything that was less than great. See, I did it again. Less than great instead of just saying it's bad. So my opinion on both of these is skip. At least for 120 volts. All the new stuff is measuring worse and get off my lawn. In seriousness though, the 200 watt, if in the market, is a contender on the 230 volt side. The price is great and the performance is better on the higher voltage. If you plan to use it at its moderate wattage, it's fine. They built this down to a price and the performance shows it. But cheap is cheap and the fact is they've sold a lot of these and will continue to do so and people like them. Doing some rough math, on average say it's 10 watts worse than the competitor. It'll take years to recoup the cost versus the Satoshi. Forget about Anchor's own products. So the value is real. The thermals lately though, what the heck? I went back and rechecked the 240 watt prime adapter from last year and some others, same results. Eight less watts of heat on the high end means it can stay on. It's a better power supply, 93% efficient at full load, but not enough ports, a captive cable, and complaints about compatibility though. Like the Satoshi, I have a feeling there is some user error, certain ports, and bad labeling. So I either have bad adapters and good power supplies, or bad power supplies and good adapters. I'm left wondering when I can get both. I think the 200 watt is a positive for the market. The 250 watt, if you just like tech, is pretty awesome. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.